Hi, my name is Amira and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a six year Dutch medical student and in this video I'm going to tell you about UWorld, the most important question bank for you, Assembly Step 1. So let's get started. I'm currently studying for Assembly Step 1. I am doing my first round of UWorld and I finished around 90% of the questions. So I feel like with everything that I've been through with this question bank, I feel like I have a little bit more knowledge to talk about this question bank. Uh, the first question is, can you do UWorld offline or do you have to buy UWorld online? And that's the thing that I really struggled with in the beginning and I decided to do UWorld offline. And it was one of my biggest mistakes because I really lost a lot of time doing that. The reason is, is because you have no clue how you're doing and also you have no clue when UWorld is adding new questions. So afterwards I bought the UWorld online version and I had to do everything all over again because I had no clue which question I already did and which one I didn't. So please, my biggest advice for you guys is just buy UWorld online. It will save you time, I promise. So how much is UWorld? UWorld is $490 for six months. I bought UWorld twice, so that means like $840 and around 900 euros. And I have to buy another extra one month. So it's around like 1000 euros, which is really expensive by one year because I made the mistake that I bought six months and afterwards I had to buy another six months. And it's way cheaper if you buy one year. The next one is when to start your world. That's also an interesting question because in the beginning I had no clue what to do. So some people are starting your world from the beginning. Other people are reading one subject in their first aid, for example, and are also watching, for example, Birds and Beyond. Afterwards, they're doing the questions from that subject in your world. Other people are reading first aid uh, from the beginning till the end, and then afterwards they decide to do your world. But for me, I started your world after reading one subject. So for example, I did cardiology. I was reading everything from cardiology in first aid. Afterwards, I watched Birds and Beyond lectures. And then I did the UWorld questions. So I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, but for me, that's the way it worked for me. The next one is, do you have to do UWorld in timed or tutor mode? I'm doing UWorld in tutor mode. And the reason is because I want to see every question. I want to see the explanation. Um, in the beginning, I did all the questions and then afterwards, I read the explanations. However, that's something that I recently changed because I had a really hard time reviewing the questions that I did. And I feel like the reason behind that is because I did all those questions. Afterwards, I forgot the question. So when I was reviewing, I had to read the question again. Afterwards, I had to read the explanation and then do it over and over again for every question. And I felt like I was really behind. So what I'm doing right now is I do one question and afterwards I review it immediately. And the reason that it's working for me is because every time that I have a question wrong, I'm like immediately, why do I have this question wrong? I feel like I remember it way more and I'm like motivated to read the explanation behind it. And if I don't do it, then I have a lot of questions wrong. And at the end, I have to review everything. And I don't feel like the motivation to really uh, go through the explanations. But I feel like it's more the motivation the moment that a question is wrong because I'm immediately thinking, what did I do wrong? And then I read the explanation. And I know some people are saying that's not the right way because if you're reading the explanations and then afterwards the question is coming up again or the same like uh, subject is coming up again, then uh, you know the answer because you already read the explanation in the other question. And I know that, and that's why it's not for everyone. But for me it worked because I was able to do more questions a day and review a lot of questions. Honestly, if you have a hard time annotating and going through all those questions, then this strategy might be for you. The next thing that I want to discuss is how many blocks of your world do you have to do? This one really depends. Are you studying for USMD Step 1 full-time or part-time? Because I think if you're doing full-time, I feel like after you reach like 50% of your world, you have to try to do at least one block a day. And I know it's really hard because sometimes I don't even reach one block a day and sometimes I can do two blocks. So it really depends on the subject, but try to reach like one block a day. In the beginning, especially like your first week, first two weeks, 
10 questions, that's okay. Afterwards, 20 questions, then 30 questions. But if you reach like 50% of your world, you have to aim to do like one block a day. And there are like 3,500 questions that you have to review. So uh, yeah, time is ticking. Um, and I know it's really hard as well because I'm the type of person that wants to review everything and then I forget to do the questions. But you have to push yourself to do a lot of questions because that is the only thing that will help you to have a better score uh, because it's active learning and if you're reading first aid over and over without doing the questions it's passive learning so try to do as many questions as you can another thing that a lot of people are not agreeing on is do you have to do your world subject based or random based i always been pro subject based and i will tell you the advantage of random based later on but the reason that i chose subject based is because it really helps me to stay motivated i want to know if i'm reading cardiology if i remembered everything and that i can uh, also uh, do those questions and get those questions right i don't want to see the renal system i don't want to see psychiatry i want to see cardiology and i feel like it really helps me to stay motivated because i'm like oh i remember this because i read about it and not like, oh, I haven't studied neurology yet. Um, so I have no clue what this subject is about, you know? So I feel like that's the reason why I chose subject base. However, there's also a big disadvantage uh, in doing subject base. For example, you're reading a question about a patient with shortness of breath. And the answers are, for example, cardiology related, respiratory related, uh, GI related. And you know which one to choose. Because you're doing the cardiology block, you know that the answer will be something about cardiology. And I think that's something that is really tricky about doing subject based because you know that you're going to get those questions. And a big advantage, of course, for a random based is that you're really simulating the exam uh, because you're not going to get a block for cardiology um, separate and then afterwards your renal block. No, you're going to get everything. However, the reason that I chose this was again because I see you world as a learning tool. Um, so that's why I do subject based, but yeah, there are a lot of pro uh, random based people. So just look what works for you again. <laughs> the next thing that I want to talk about is annotating the explanations from your world. I think most people are annotating your world in their first aid. And that's something that I do as well. So yeah, I think that's the best thing to do because you want to have all your resources together. However, I know some people who are doing like separate notes from your world or doing flashcards, but just look what works for you. However, I feel like the majority of people are annotating your world in their first aid. The next thing that I want to discuss is does your percentage mean anything? No, I don't think so. Uh, because um, I saw a lot of people who are like getting like 60%, 65% on their first round of your world. And afterwards they scored like a 250 or a 260. I don't feel like it means anything. Um, and also you have to remember that the average is skewed. And the reason why is because people are doing second rounds. So those people are more advanced. And that's the reason why the average percentage is higher than it should be. So no, I don't think it matters. Um, I think the thing that matters is that you've learned from those questions, that you annotated it correctly and that you like do MEMEs and just track your progress. Uh, I think that's the most important thing. So no, I don't think your percentage of your world matters, especially in your first round. I think maybe in the second round you can think like, okay, I should be improving. If you're not improving, then there might be something wrong with your strategy. Uh, however, I don't think your first round of uh, your world, uh, when it comes to percentage, really matters. And the next one is how many rounds of your world do you have to do? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish my first round afterwards and do one MBME, then do my wrong questions and then afterwards do my second round. I think in the second round, it is really important to do uh, random based questions and do it in timed mode because you really want to simulate your exam uh, at this point because you reviewed everything and hopefully you already did an NBME at least. And the last thing that I want to discuss is when to take your first NBME and which one to take. Uh, that's a question that I feel like I really struggled with because I didn't know if I had to do an MBME before starting. I chose not to. However, looking back, I think it was better to do a first MBME at the beginning because then you can really see your baseline. Um, I know it's really intimidating. That's why I didn't do it. However, seeing your progress is more important than feeling comfortable because during this exam, there's nothing to be 
comfortable about. So just do your first MBME at the beginning to have a baseline. And I think you should do your second MBME after finishing your first round of UWorld. And afterwards, it depends when your exam is, but if it's like in eight weeks, um, you can do an NBME every single week to uh, look at your progress and see your weak subjects. And the next thing would be, which MBME do you have to take first? I think it really depends, but the two that you are going to do at the end and not at the beginning, please don't do those two at the beginning, are MBME 18 and self-assessment 2. Besides that, a lot of people are doing self-assessment 1 in the beginning. Know that that one overtakes with 10 or 15 points. And you can do one of the newer MBMEs. I'm going to do MBME 24. Those are the things I want to discuss about UWorld. Just know that I'm still studying for assembly step one. And these are the things that I've learned along the way. However, I still haven't done my exams. Uh, look what works for you. Uh, but these are the things that are working for me. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe as well. And I will hopefully see you in my next video. Bye.